Hello, and welcome to another installment of I Am Issachar. As you can see, I'm dressed for the battle, or at least I think I am. Um, wait a minute. Let me just let me just find my, my equipment. Now, where did I put that shield? Where did I put that shield? My shield? Where's my shield? Oh, 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 yeah. Here's my shield. Here's my shield. And oh, my sword. Where, where did I put my sword? Oh, I might not need it. As long as I have a shield, that should be good enough, right? Let me tell you, that is no way to be prepared for a battle. You cannot go into a battle not being equipped for the battle. You can't find yourself in the midst of the battle trying to look around for the things that you need to be able to fight in the battle. Thus, we see this example as we look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's the story of David and Goliath. There are just two points I want to bring out to you today as it relates to our young champion, David, as he fights against the mighty Goliath. We know the background of the story. David goes out to greet his brothers. He hears uh, Goliath defying the army of the living God. David doesn't like it and he gets irate and he's like, yo, I will take care of the problem that the soldiers apparently didn't have enough confidence to take care of. Why is David so confident that he can take care of this problem, Goliath? Oh, I'm so glad you asked because in David's mind, Goliath was no more than any other problem that he had already handled with God. What am I saying? Well, how about we jump in and look at verse 36 and 37. So Saul gets word that David is saying that he could handle Goliath, the problem that Israel is having uh, because the men are too scared to fight. Not David, though. David says, hey, I have already dealt with problems worse, way worse than your Goliath. Hmm. Well, verse 36 says this. On 35, I went out after the flock and he's talking, David is talking. He says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. That's verse 34. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by his beard and struck it and killed it. Verse 36, your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Listen what he said. He said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw. Okay, I don't know if you know anything about animals, but animals are four-legged animals. Beasts, lions and bears are four-legged animals and their paws are massive. And not only just, just a swipe from the paw will, will kill you, but then they have these things called claws that come out and if they cut you, they will shred you. David said, God has allowed me to fight a lion and a bear, to kill a lion and a bear, to deliver me from the paw of a lion and the bear. He said, the, the, the God will take, allow me to, I want to read it again. He said, God will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine, the hand of a man. In David's mind, what is a man when you compare him to a four-legged wild animal? He is nothing. He is nothing to me. I can take care of the problem under the power of the living God. See, because David said that the Lord delivered me out of this problem. So here's my point. We will find ourselves in problems. We have to be like David. This is the first point. That when we find ourselves facing things that seem to be giants, we have to remember God's faithfulness, how he has acted in the past. If he has done it before, guess what? He will do it again. If he has delivered you before, you don't have to fret. You don't have to worry. Because like David said, he's able to take care of a man. <laughs> he said, this, hand, this is the hand of a man. God has helped me defeat paws of, of lions and bears. This, is a, this man is nothing to me. That's point number one. So remember, when you find yourself facing something, you don't have to fret. Just recall back what God has done for you in the past. And then the second point, which really was my illustration as we began this lesson. 
When you are in a battle, you cannot go around looking to find yourself getting prepared for the battle. You can't go into the battle not already having things you need. Looking for what you need while you're about to fight is not going to work. You have to go in already equipped. Well, let's look at this point. We find this point in verse 40. Uh, so then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and he put them in a shepherd's bag and in a pouch, which he had and his sling, which was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. Now that's key. I want to read that a little bit slower to you because I want to break this down as we go. Then he took his staff in his hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the staff, the word of God. He took his staff in his hand and then it tells us, and he chose for himself five smooth stones. In other words, when we're in the battle, five key scripture that we can use to be able to take down our enemy. Well, how do I justify this? Well, because when I look at the story of, of the Exodus, Moses, the Bible tells us that he too picked up his rod and the Lord said, stretch it out. And then when he stretched it out, the waters parted. God tells us the same thing. Pick up this word and use it to your advantage. I've given you what you need. There's power in this thing if you would but use it. So when we go into the battle, if you notice, all David needed was one stone, although he selected five. This is key. When you are about to go into battle, make sure that you have committed at least five different scriptures to for five different possible scenarios. My friends and I have done this. We, we made a pact that we would learn five key scriptures. The scriptures that can be used at any time. Now, not all scriptures for everything, right? So you have to know which one to use. So like um, when things don't seem like they turn out well for me, one of my key scriptures, one of my key stones is Romans 8.28. And we know all things work together for good to them who love God and who are the call according to his purpose. And when I find myself anxious and worried about situations that I can't control, that my other key scripture that I go to, my other key stone is um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And then whenever sin tries to creep back in, whenever memories of past things that I've done try to come back and seize me and try to take me down, another one of my, my third stone that I pull out is the stone from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 that says, um, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the battle, you cannot go into the battle looking, where's my sword? Where's my sword? Where's my sword? Oh, it's too late. You must make sure that you already have these things in place. So let's go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for giving us your word today. Thank you for teaching us how to be able to fight in a battle. God, would you please um, make sure that this word goes forward, that individuals can use it for uh, their strength and their victory in you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know what I'm going to say. If you haven't done it already, make sure you hit subscribe. And please, by all means, tell other people to find themselves that they can get blessed just like you so they can learn how to fight in the battle.